Hello! In a previous video, we looked at how Affinity Photo can handle not only multi-layer EXRs, but also Blender's own filmic color transforms. Now in this video, we'll look at how we can use those passes to rebuild the scene and then be able to adjust selected materials to taste. But first, we need to jump back into Blender to set up a, my, uh, a material ID pass. So jump back into Blender and we can see here the setup I have is the material index plugged into a normalized node and then a file output to PNG in this case. Um, one thing I should note as well is that I have set up material IDs. So within the actual scene itself, I can see every pass index is slightly adjusted for each material. Yeah, there we go. This is quite nice as you can be selective with material grouping. So if the filing cabinet has lots of different materials assigned to it, let's say the drawers and the actual body of the unit are the same, uh, are different materials, sorry, you can just, you can still select them as the same pass index. So you can adjust them afterwards together. Okay. Anyway, let's jump back into Affinity Photo. Okay, we have our layers. Now, first thing we should just see, just to clear up stuff, is things we're not going to use. So here are a bunch that I'm not going to use. So let's Control G, group those, and call it Not Use, and uncheck the visibility, and drop it all the way to the bottom. Okay. Don't need that either. I'm just going to delete it. Um, so let's uncheck these. Now we are faced with our passes diffuse, emission, gloss, subsurface, and transmission. So all of these combine, all of these groups, sets of three combine with the same blend modes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group them in Affinity Photo by selecting them, Control G, and giving them their relevant name. Diffuse. Let's just speed through this. Okay, and the only one that isn't joined in a group is Emission, which goes above and is on add mode. Also transparency goes above everything as well. I'm not I'm not entirely sure why it just matches the beauty render here. Okay, so let's change all of these. Instead of pass through, add and let's go into transmission first and color multiply and direct gets added on top of indirect. Now for diffuse, color multiply, direct, added, ugh. direct, added on top of indirect. Just speed through the rest. And we're done. And now you can see if we check the combined beauty pass, it looks very similar. Not totally the same mind because this has undergone the uh, has gone past through the process of the cycles denoising to clean everything up a little bit so the passes will look a little bit noisier. And lastly, we need to import our material ID pass. So I'm just going to do select all, copy, and I'm going to paste it on top of everything. And I'm going to call it selector and then hide it like so. So what could we do with these now combined passes? Well, let's say we have rendered out this entire sequence and suddenly we want to change the color of say the filing cabinet. Now we've already invested hundreds and hundreds of hours into rendering and we really don't want to go back and tweak the material to re-export. So we can do it here by using the flood select tool with a tolerance of zero and with that selected, we can just grab the filing cabinet, go to our diffuse color, 
let's load up a hue saturation luminosity and nest it in there Control d to deselect and now we can change the color of our filing cabinet what should we go for it's quite nice maybe let's go for a nice pink very nice okay how about we polish up our table a little bit um select the table here uh, these are all part of the same material id you could always you know lasso deselect that um and let's go to our gloss direct let's add an exposure nest that in deselect oh we can boost that up you see it starts to look a bit rubbish if it's increased too much but you get the general idea Okay, let's say we're happy with our final image and we want to export it. So we go to File, Export. Let's do a JPEG. And export, Save. Now let's look back at what we've just created. Ah, doesn't look quite the same. Um, but thanks to uh, Jan Philippe, Jan Philippe, um, who responded to my first video and helped out with this little bit of information. So let's change our image from 32-bit to 16-bit with another color transform. So first I'm going to merge visible and that gives us our image and go layer, sorry, document, color format, 16-bit RGB. It breaks everything, but let's add our OCIO layer and go from sRGB to linear and we're back and now we can go file, export, image, export, save, replace, and we have our corrected image. Okay, that's about it. Um, if you haven't seen it, there's a part one of this tutorial, which I'll link to in the description. And if you'd like to stay in touch, you can follow me on my Twitter, where I post about various projects, um, including this project, uh, which I've just completed storyboards for, uh, for a, a solid five minute, five minute short. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.